afternoon, everybody. I am here at the Silver Line platform uh, of South Asian, and today we are going to World Trade Center, the least used Silver Line station, at least the one that's in. Let's do it. Here we are, World Trade Center. First impressions of this uh, so least I've, used station. I've been here before. Oh, sorry, we gotta wait for the buses. You know, somehow the loudest electric buses. Honestly, I don't think they're that crazy, but this is definitely. What's it look like a rundown Home Depot? I think it's an interesting station because it's like it's in the tunnel but we still have the like outside section there so it has like some of the benefits of being like an underground station but but it's still got some open air it's still open degree. air I mean I wouldn't say it's like revolutionary and stuff. yeah and I'm sorry like I know that these these are not like loud buses because the engine is not like backfiring but it is still loud yeah and, and especially in here, like it echoes a lot. Right? Mainly just due to the size of it. Yeah, and it's huge. Well, yeah, most importantly, it's the concrete of the walls. Yeah. I get that silver is like this, ooh, fancy new color, but it's like gray everything. Like, you know, these sort of like ridge things up here and the gray signage, it all feels like it's like faded almost. Yeah. You know? This concourse, I gotta be honest, is also kind of nothing. It's like this big... But granted, when you compare it to the rest of the BTA, it's actually fairly decent. I'm going to yeah. be completely honest with you. I'm kind of in love with the lighting. If, you, uh, if you've ever been to Portland Airport, it definitely reminds me a little bit of it. If you take a look at the roof, if you look at the coloring on the side, it's very much like that, you know, modernist architecture. And I kind of love the art on the walls. It's like... almost like a watercolor. The decorations of everything are super nice. It's just like... It's such a big cavernous space to then have three fair gates down there. It just shows that like they they knew it wasn't going to be used a lot. They took fair gates out. I don't know, but like it appears that they were never there in the first place. There is a hint that this truly is the least used on the Silver Line, yeah. to our knowledge. So, one thing that I really have noticed here, specifically, in, I guess this is the seaport at large, but when you think about like the architecture, what's based here, this is all very similar to what is found in like Crystal City mm -hmm. outside of Washington D.C. Um, so it's a lot of consulting, it's a lot of like contracting, lots of business, like big business is done here in the seaport. And it's very surprising that for an area like this to be run solely on a BRT, the fact that that is what it solely runs on in terms of public transportation is fairly surprising to me. The fact that this has been in place for 20 years, and the seaport is growing to an exponential degree and that very little has been done to change that is a little bit surprising to me. It's not to the type of service you would expect. Yeah. It's the level of service you might want to see, which is great but the type is not there. And that's probably why there's a massive parking garage right behind us there. Yes, that's right. Without the Silver Line, there would be no parking lot here. In fact, the Silver Line is the reason for a majority of development throughout Seaport. Despite being the most recent color addition to grace the MBTA's maps, the Silver Line has a long and complicated history going all the way back to the 1980s, when it was first studied as a way to help redevelop the newly vacant Seaport District. These initial plans were much broader in scope, with an underground tunnel connecting the waterfront and Washington Street lines, island platforms at every station, and daily ridership exceeding 40,000 for the full build. 
Unfortunately, the project was met with construction complications and severe budget overruns. When the transitway opened in 2004, it did so using a mishmash of new and old buses, a leaky and rough tunnel, and speeds lower than that of surface bus routes. While ridership has met expectations, they're still far below that of many key bus routes in Boston, and the Silver Line has been criticized for not meeting the definition of true BRT. Okay, we're here. We're here on this bridge, which is like at this upper exit, and there's a lower exit. There's also a Silver Line bus stop down there. So here's the way it works. When it's coming into South Station on the SL1 and the SL3, when they're coming from like underneath, um, underneath the Boston Harbor through the Ted Williams Tunnel, they come up here first. They go out to Silver Line Way down this street, and then they come back in mainly so that they can change drivers out here. Okay, but... So, I know, it's a it's little bit... so... It's the whole thing of, like, how they have to loop around the entrance to the tunnel because um, Massachusetts State Police won't let them use that ramp. It, it's, like, it's a little bit like that thing of, like, the whole point is for it to actually be faster and more, you know, faster than driving and a more right. direct route. And if you have to circle around and around, it's like it's not going to be worth it. It's not going to feel worth it, even if you do end up saving time. Right. But I doubt you do if you have to stop out here, go around, and then stop at the same station again. Right. We are um, standing outside of Eddie Merlot's uh, using a very precarious place to balance the camera. I've never seen something so, like, <laughs> it, I mean, it works. It works. it works. You know what doesn't work? The silver line as a good mode of transportation. Wow. I am sorry. Straight to I'm, the point. I'm used to, uh, the two videos of these that I've done so far, I'm used to it being like, oh, this is interesting, you know, this like pretty suburban area or like, you know, uh, residential area. You know, there's multiple reasons why the station might not be super highly used. Um, there's just generally like a lot of information that we can get. Well, that works. <laughs> yep. This Hold is how, this is them kicking us out. Yeah. No, no, I'm saying. It's really just odd to see that this, what is it, multi-million, billion dollar project sees so few people per day. In fact, I'm gonna pull up the stats right now. It is so shocking to see that this station, however much this project costs, only sees 1,571 boardings per day. With all of these huge high-rise buildings, with all of the connections that could be here, less than 2,000 people per day use this station. Now granted, we also have two nearby stations. We have Courthouse and we have Silver Line Way, which see a little bit more usage. Actually, I don't know about Silver Line Way, but Courthouse sees a little bit more, and that's more of like a, an actually built-up area, so that might explain why. World Trade Center is used a little bit less, but the fact is both stations are still much lower on the usage. 573,415 people per year, you know, when you multiply that, it's just such a minimal number. And it's actually probably lower than that because our daily boardings is average weekday boarding. Yeah. It is Saturday, it is dead here right now. So it's just like, it's really disappointing to me. You know, Savin Hill, I can understand why people don't use that. There's no direct other bus connection. Um, it is in a, a more residential area. It's right on the highway. Green Street, I can understand. There is, again, no direct bus connection. It is right near uh, Central Jamaica Plain where you have the 39. Here, we have dozens of huge buildings that are either apartments or offices. We have I mean, I come to Seaport pretty frequently to go to the ICA, there's all these great restaurants, and we have the station that gets such little usage um, and feels like it's overbuilt yeah. and has buses stopping just on the street because it's more convenient for certain, you know, employee shifts. It is, out of all of the stations that we've been to so far... I'd say it's the most surprising that it's this low on the It's list. the most surprising and it's the most disappointing for me. Yeah. The Stover Line to me is a huge disappointment in every sense, but this is like the epitome of everything that's wrong with it. Are they turning up the music to try to I get I think us they are. Let's get out of here. All right, Andrew, don't leave yet. What? I have to close out the video. I thought we were, sorry. Andrew, thank you for joining me. Thank you. And thank, thank for you me. for watching. I'll be back in a little while with the next least used station. As always, see if you can guess what it is in the comments below. Do you have any guesses? I have a guess, but I'm not gonna spoil it. Good, good man, good man. Um, I'll see you on the next video, and have a good one. Bye.